Hi, everybody. It's Dan Gretsch. I'm the founder of BizHack Academy, and I'm here with Lilia Posos, as well as our amazing teaching team to celebrate our 13th Digital Marketers graduation party. Uh, I'm so thankful for all of you showing up and being here in support of some of these amazing entrepreneurs and powerful women who we're going to be featuring in today's presentation. Um, we have a, a really packed agenda. Uh, we're going to have uh, six case studies of real life campaigns, uh, digital marketing being used in real time to generate leads and customers for small businesses around the country. We're going to have a keynote address uh, from uh, about should your brand take a stand. Uh, that's going to be from Juana Jones of Jolly Creatives. We'll have a graduation ceremony. We'll have a Biz Hacker Award. We'll talk to you about what that is. We'll take a class photo and we'll have thank you gifts throughout. Um, and these thank you gifts are gifts that come from our uh, participants in the course as a thank you to you their friends and family and the community for all that you've done in support of them over these five really intense weeks. I also wanted to let you know that today's event is being done in support of a charity called Construyendo Futuros. Construyendo Futuros is represented by Mercedes Medina uh, of the Screen Co Agency. Mercedes has the distinction to be our first international student. So she took the course uh, from Venezuela, and she's asked that we support uh, as a community uh, her uh, a nonprofit that she helps called Construyendo Futuros, which gives food to children in Venezuela. And a $12 donation buys a food package. We'll be sending you a follow up email with more details about how you can contribute. So, on to our first set of thank you gifts raffles. So, again, um, we know that there is a community that our graduates are a part of, that you guys are their support. And so as a thank you for coming today and as a thank you for being uh, this sort of cocoon of love and support that helps them during these five weeks in this intense course experience, but also uh, in life um, and in business, we wanted to uh, give back. And so um, our first raffle is sponsored by Nordis Technologies, uh, we have three Tervis tumblers, and Lilia is going to say the names of the winners, and then you'll get a follow-up email afterwards connecting you to Nordis Technologies, uh, who will um, be able to actually help get it to you. Shelly Dolan, uh, you'll get an email with Shelly, and she can coordinate the, the gift. So our three winners are? Danielle Moore, Jadira Tate, and Julia Mayor. Maybe. Congratulations. Congratulations, guys. Yay. And we actually have another gift. This one is from uh, One World Learning Center, uh, Antoinette Peters Patterson. You'll be hearing from Antoinette very shortly about her really kind of jaw-dropping results. Uh, and who's the winner of our phone grip? Carolina Garcia. Perfect. Congratulations. We're going to actually have four more raffles throughout, so stick around. And um, by the way, our best raffle is saved for the end, so you stay to the end. We also have an amazing musical surprise coming up uh, at the end, so please do stick around. Uh, today is a 90-minute event, so it'll run uh, from in, until 2 o'clock. So I wanted to take a quick uh, talk about how BizHack got to the point where we're able to celebrate these amazing entrepreneurs. Uh, BizHack was founded in 2017. Um, we have been, uh, we won a startup pitch competition in 2019 as one of the top startups in Miami. We were part of the 10,000 Small Business Accelerator Program. And those of you, uh, we have a lot, we have, I think six or seven people from the Goldman Sachs program, alumni who went through the program this cohort. Uh, please uh, send your love, uh, guys, via the chat. Uh, Michelle and all the others who are part of the uh, Goldman Sachs alumni group. It's an amazing group. Um, if anybody wants to put some information about the program, it's a free program sponsored by Goldman Sachs and taught with a curriculum from Babson College. And then the other thing is I'm newly a part of SWAT 305. This is a night funded um, program to help startups who are impacted by COVID-19. Uh, and so if you want to go to SWAT305.org, I'm getting incredible, uh, really helpful um, coaching from Jamie Farrell and 
Uh, it's really uh, been a gift. So uh, those are some of the accolades. And we've partnered with some of the top universities uh, in Florida, uh, Broward College, the Idea Center of Miami Dade College, FIU. Um, we uh, love these affiliations and we love bringing our curriculum to the businesses and the professionals and of course the students in those institutions. We've also partnered deeply with our local community. And this is just a small list of the more than 50 community partners that BizHack has cultivated over the last several years. Uh, we wanted to particularly call out this group because these are all partners who are dedicated to helping create more diversity and inclusion in our small business and supporting minority-owned and women-owned small businesses. And so um, we have very explicitly and um, intentionally partnered with organizations that can bring us uh, more people of color and a more diverse set of participants in our, co in our, in our cohorts and let their excellence shine. And I think you'll see today uh, how effective these partnerships have been in bringing us uh, one of the most diverse uh, cohorts we have ever had in our history. And I'm so, so proud of that. I also wanted to announce that it's not just enough to have uh, partnerships. Um, BizHack is also putting money uh, in the t on the table in order to support diversity and inclusiveness for entrepreneurs of color. We have set aside for this next cohort a $20,000 scholarship fund. And we are inviting any professionals of color, uh, minority-owned business owners, um, women-owned businesses to apply for this scholarship. You can go to try.bizhack.com slash scholarship. Try.bizhack.com slash scholarship. Um, and we'll put that into the chat now. Um, we welcome your scholarship applications. Uh, we've had an influx of interest. Uh, we do have limited funds, so do get your scholarship application in as soon as you can. This is a scholarship to help uh, pay uh, part of the cost of our five-week accelerated program that everyone here uh, on today's program just graduated from. So at this point in our history, we have now had 450 businesses run through the Digital Marketer's Edge accelerated digital marketing training course. We've had very, very small micro enterprises and startups, and we've had some of the largest businesses in South Florida, including Royal Caribbean, Ryder, and NBC Universal. We've also had our graduates go on to just extraordinary places. Uh, Eileen Higgins became elected as a county commissioner. Raphael Savino of Ascendance Studios, one of our instructors, he has now been featured in national campaigns by both Google and Facebook for his digital excellence. Um, we have uh, such an extraordinary set of uh, instructors and alumni that make up the BizHack community. And we're so, so proud to be inducting another 40 businesses into that alumni group. The biggest way that we measure our impact is through the amount of revenue that we generate as a direct result of people taking our course and running through our methodology. And you can see that these were the numbers in um, 2019. Uh, we had 241 Facebook ads run by uh, more than 100 businesses. They spent $17,000 $17, in advertising while in the course, and they made more than half a million dollars in incremental revenue. That is a return on their ad spend of nearly 29 to 1. And you're going to see that this cohort beat them. This cohort beat the 2019 average, and I could not be more proud of them. We just compiled the numbers this morning. So let us talk about cohort 13. It's all about them today. Um, they are known as the COVIDs. This was a name that they chose for themselves. And the reason they call themselves the COVIDs beyond the obvious is because they are all making videos together. Uh, one of the big essential elements of our methodologies, we do require that you actually make a video in order to run an ad uh, on the Facebook or Instagram platform. So they are the co-video creators, the COVIDs, and uh, they're also wearing face masks. Uh, they are also, in part because of COVID, the first all digital and online uh, cohort we've ever had. It was all live instruction with some video support, but it was all delivered through Zoom. And um, I gotta say, it didn't hold anyone back, and it also allowed us 
to have international participants and participants from around the country, something that we haven't had in the past. So in many ways, uh, BizHack had to pivot due to COVID-19, and we are kind of forging a new future that in many ways is even brighter and more inclusive than what we've had in the past. And I'm very, very proud of the work that our team's done to do that, uh, our instructors and our, our uh, core team. These are the COVIDs. Uh, it's an extraordinary group of businesses. Most of them are small businesses, uh, micro enterprises, um, boutique agencies, independent PR firms. Um, some of these are family run businesses. Many of these businesses have been around for decades. Others are brand new. It's a real diverse set of folks, uh, B2B and B2C, product and service companies and e-commerce as well. You're gonna hear from a pretty diverse group of them including B2B and B2C, uh, an apparel company, an e-commerce company. What we tried to do in these presentations is show you the diversity of the kinds of participants we have in the course, and also uh, the um, extraordinary um, results that we can get for very different kinds of companies. Uh, it, it, we do not cater to or serve in this course a specific type of company uh, while B2B might uh, often um, be a little bit harder with a slower sales cycle, as Ebony will talk about in her presentation. Uh, these techniques and these tactics are the core foundation and fundamentals of digital marketing. And when you apply them, watch out. These are the results from the COVIDs done in less than six weeks. They ran 49 campaigns. They spent more than $2,700 in advertising. They made in incremental revenue, a lifetime value of more than $105,000. That is a 38 uh, to one return on ad spend. In other words, for every dollar they spent in advertising while in the course, they made more than $38 in lifetime revenue per customer that they acquired. Um, honestly, these are stunning results. And you're going to actually see how folks got these results with some of the extraordinary case studies that are about to come up. And so uh, with that, uh, I'm going to welcome Kerline Jules. Um, Kerline, and for everybody, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send, uh, say, a quick introduction. And then I'm going to stop sharing my screen and invite you to share yours. You'll give your presentation and then your coach, as well as Alex, the lead instructor, will weigh in. Uh, and give your um, give their their feedback before we move on to the next person. So for all the presenters, please have your slides ready to go. And it'll start with a brief introduction from me. Uh, take yourself off mute, and then as soon as I finish my introduction, you'll get to go um, and give your presentation uh, from your own screens. All right. So. Kerline Jules is an extraordinary case study of how a PR and communications professional can pivot in the digital world, leveraging her extraordinary understanding of her audience and her really great and savvy writing ability. Kerline is someone who's really attuned to the moment that we're living in right now. You're going to see in her presentation how she was able to take hold of the moment and launch an incredibly uh, creative and impactful campaign that also has a social conscience. And so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Kerline Jules. Thank you, Alec and Dan. Sorry. Share my screen. Hopefully everyone can see my screen. Yes, we can. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Kerline Jules. I am the founder of Jules Management Group, and I'm also the creator of your seat ain't safe, um, a t-shirt advocacy campaign. So just a little bit about myself. Uh, by the age of 29, I had experienced four layoffs and I was left to answer what was next. I had this amazing career opportunity working for a global iconic brand, um, doing community relations, making an impact in the community. Uh, when unfortunately one day I was notified that my position was being eliminated and that I was transitioning into a completely different role in a different department. I was grateful to have a job, but I had no passion for the work that I was doing. And so in 2014, I walked out of the corporate offices for the last time with a set mindset 
that I was taking over control of my career. Uh, leveraging the power of story branding and social media, I wanted to help organizations um, and, and people establish themselves as thought leaders to create a digital footprint. I am Kerlene Jules. I am the founder of Jules Management Group, a boutique branding and marketing company specializing in social media marketing, helping to create brands that educate, empower, entertain, and engage. So why did I take this uh, program? Um, I've pretty much turned my quarantine period into a self-professional development season. Um, this is the first time in my entire lifetime where I feel like the entire world has slowed down. Um, and so I took this opportunity to work on me. Um, I wanted to sharpen my skills as a digital marketer um, and also leverage the, the skills that I acquired to help my clients navigate what will become the new digital normal. And so BizHack Academy was the perfect opportunity for that. So the campaign, the case study, um, Your Seat Ain't Safe, uh, the T-shirt advocacy campaign is currently running on the Teespring platform, which is a popular T-shirt advocacy campaign platform. Um, and pretty much the campaign is really all about empowering voters, build, building awareness to um, um, upcoming elections. The campaign messaging is set to empower voters to understand the power of their votes in any election. And it is their votes that elect seats. And it's low key a reminder um, to our elected officials who sometimes forget that we the people are the ones who elect the seats. So the problem, um, this is a passion, pro uh, passion project that I've been working on, on on the side. I'm very passionate about advocacy and, and social action. Um, and so unfortunately I was, the project has been dormant uh, due to competing priorities and so I needed to really increase the traffic to the online store. And so the perfect solution for me was to run a traffic ad, um, leveraging a, a cool video that I thought would resonate with our audience and build custom audiences against uh, the current followers on social media, email lists, and create lookalike audiences. The results, uh, the budget was roughly $75. My impressions were a little bit over 1200 my reach was a little bit over 1000 the link clicks was 152 and the unit sold uh, during the duration of this course uh, this program was 18. so what did i learn from the campaign um, this campaign is designed to target millennials um, really getting them hype up about voting in every election um, but the interesting thing that I noticed with this campaign, um, for one of my campaigns, I accidentally forgot to change the, uh, the max age range. Um, and so when I got my results back, the top two groups of my campaign were 45 to 54 and 55 to 64. And that was very interesting for me because I realized that I have a target market that I can further explore and possibly create a customer persona for that market. Um, Another thing that I noticed was for me that traffic ads perform uh, much better than the, the video ads. Uh, I do think that my campaign currently speaks to the, the current climate. Um, this particular ad probably ran for a little bit for a day and a half and I was just really impressed with the engagement that I got from the campaign. This is my marketing funnel. Um, again, the awareness, uh, the reach, which uh, the unique individuals who I was able to reach was 10K um, considerations were link clicks were 152. And my, again, my conversions were sales 18. The ad budget was 75 and roughly all together the profit um, was for the shirts was $200. So I thought that was pretty good given the, the short time period and that the campaign was has been dormant. Um, this is a the screenshot of the ad. Um, and so this is a probably a 15 second video stock image with a gentleman wearing the shirt. Um, and I really think it's more so about the copy. There's no, there's no text on the actual video. Um, and it just really resonated with, with the audience. We had a lot of people were sharing it, commenting and engaging. And I thought that was just perfect uh, because now I can leverage that engagement and build a custom audience for retargeting. Um, so my aha moments, uh, marketing is a lot of work. Uh, please show love to your, your marketers. It is a, a lot of mental work. Uh, Really spending time on customer persona is really important. We have a good understanding of your target audience and the different um, segments of those audiences. Uh, learning the key difference between Google and, and Facebook ads was something that I thought was um, pretty cool. Also leveraging Google My Business as an instrumental, as a tool for business leads. 
Um, so what's next for me? Uh, I'm gonna work on creating some additional buyer personas, um, incorporate some content marketing so I can really help turn this into an online movement that's empowering our communities to vote. Scale up the campaign because I think it's doing pretty well. And then I wanna take some additional courses on Google Analytics. Um, I do have a BI background, um, and so I wanna dive deeper into the data. Um, and then I'm also taking some other programs to help sharpen myself, like the Cornell Women's Entrepreneur Certificate Program and also doing a Facebook Digital Marketing Certificate Program. And so I hope you all will vote um, in every election. You guys can follow the campaign on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. They're all yourseatainsafe.com. And that's it, I'm Kerline Jules. Perfect, thank you. Uh, the lead instructor of the class was Alex de Carvalho. I'd love for you to weigh in as well as Ricardo Barris, her marketing coach. I am so impressed, Kerlin, with, uh, with, your, with your efforts, uh, how well organized you have been, how you tracked all your results so well, as well as with your uh, efforts to uh, raise awareness around uh, voting and, and getting your t-shirts out. So I'm very, uh, very impressed and uh, congratulations. Thank you, Alex. And, uh, and likewise, uh, Curly, and commendations are in order. Uh, you've, you've done a lot of work and you're very analytical and, and that BI background definitely helps. Um, just, just coaching you through this process uh, just demonstrated that you have the capability and what it takes to really go ahead and scale those ads. So I'd admonish you to just, just do that and congrats, um, you, you did pretty well. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you so much, Kerline, for the amazing presentation. And um, I'm gonna share my screen again as we go on to the next presenter. Um, but I did wanna um, uh, give Ebony a quick heads up that you're next. And by the way, you can see that people in the chat are celebrating our amazing entrepreneurs. Um, you know, if we were in a room right now, we would be clapping our head off. Uh, you know, Kerline's, um, you know, family would be whistling and hooting. Um, you know, I know we're in a little bit of the sterile environment of Zoom, but this is, guys, a graduation present, uh, a graduation celebration, and I would really appreciate it if you guys could show the love on the chat uh, and do everything that we can to take the slight awkwardness of doing a virtual graduation and make it feel a little more homey and show a little bit of love. So, thank you, Marta, Antoinette, Regina, Wendy, all of you guys for uh, blowing up the chat right now. Really appreciate it, and I would love for some of our guests as well. Uh, and feel free to put in reflections um, or commentary as well. Um, you know, I, I know our entrepreneurs are always looking to improve and that would re really welcome that. This case study is by Ebony Smith of the Ebenum Equation. And this is a really powerful B2B case study about a very talented consultant who is building up her practice using digital marketing. One of the things I wanna mention to you is you'll see that Ebony uh, though she built ads in the Facebook platform, did not actually launch those ads. And she'll explain to you why. Why did she do that? Why would she build an ad and not run it when she had it ready to go and it was probably an ad that would make her a lot of money. So with that, I wanna welcome Ebony Smith of Ebenum Equation. Hi everyone, I'm gonna get my screen up. And um, so the story of me and my ad, <laughs> Um, is an interesting one. I just want to share with everybody the main reason I took this class was so that I could become a better um, customer to my, to my eventual um, marketing person that I'm going to hire. I, before taking this class, I fired my marketing agency. And so what I wanted to get out of this class was how do I set the KPI so that they could serve me better? That's my whole um, perspective as CEO of my company is, how do I become a better manager of the resources that I've allocated to each one of the projects and each one of the vendors? And how do I become a great customer to my vendors so that we can both move me towards my goals? And so this is where BizHack Academy came into place. I realized that for me, digital marketing was a black box and I wanted to take the, the class so that I could um, understand what that black box was. Story of me, I was given an ultimatum five years ago to relocate to New Jersey or leave the company. I picked me. 
I resigned and went into a one-year non-compete period. I decided I was going to invest in my growth and personal relationship. I started coaching school to be a better leader upon my return. I got some clients and then I decided to launch my coaching uh, practice and doing strategic foresight. I believe we can all design better relationships with the people who matter most. My name is Ebony Smith and I founded Ebonym Equation. And by the way, Ebonym just stands for Ebony in Latin. I needed a clean trademark. And so that's the history of Ebonym uh, versus any other word. So for me, life has a cadence. And so my business has a cadence, my life has a cadence, and sometimes you have to understand what the drum beat is. And during COVID, I realized that I was gonna need to pivot my cadence and what the drum beat for my business was gonna look like moving forward. And inside that pivot, I realized my marketing firm wasn't serving me as I began to analyze and look at the numbers and they didn't have any results to show me after being engaged for eight months that I was satisfied with. So when the opportunity to take the BizHack Academy program online surfaced, I said, this is the right timing. I need to understand what it would take in order for me to have a better provider and also for me to be a better customer and let them know the metrics at the beginning of the engagement. So my cadence began to change. So see are some of my accomplishments. As Dan mentioned, I didn't actually run an ad, but I wanted to know the basics behind it and set up the um, Facebook uh, business manager and how it all worked so that when the uh, marketing company comes in that they um, have the strict KPIs that I'm looking for and then I can go in and check. So um, some of the things that we focused in on class was looking at our funnel. This is the typical funnel I use for my business. I do conferences and uh, executive roundtables. I do some social media posts and magazine article writing. I also get referrals from clients and I do a lot of relationship buildings through emails and capabilities briefing. This is just my funnel that I typically use to bring business into um, to bring engagement into my business. Some of the things that I did do um, around the business, and this is the real reason that I was hi I hiring a marketing firm, is that my ICF uh, coaching program got accredited during this period. I knew it was coming, it was in my business timeline, and I knew it sometime over near the end of the summer as I began to launch my next cohort, I'd wanna engage a marketing company to help me with a solid digital strategy to fill the spots in this new product that I'm launching um, out of beta. And so really this was about how do I learn the information I need so that I could do a great product launch in about 60 days. And so I think I got that information during class today. So this is the program, this is my beta cohort. The website and everything is up and live and I began to interview firms that are gonna help me. So I'm really excited about this stage in my journey. I also, because Alex focused on a lot of different ways that we could do digital marketing besides Facebook ads, I really dug in deep to those. And so I increased my social marketing, um, my social media posts and presence uh, across three platforms. Uh, I began to do a few more things around engagement just to help me. Um, my engagement did go up on LinkedIn, so I'm quite happy about that. And so these are some of the, some of the non-ad things. I also pivoted to virtual speaking during this time. So I revamped my website, the speaker page, and some of the collateral that goes along with it, just so that as the industry changes from me speaking at conferences, that I have the um, know-how and the skill, and I have a funnel already set up for a virtual speaking um, revenue stream for me, which is a great way that I typically do marketing for um, my company and its services, is to get on stage, speak, and then people come up and wanna talk to you afterwards. And so this pivot of during COVID of going into virtual really has helped me. I also decided that I was going to hire a VA to book me on podcasts and um, to also book more of my virtual speaking engagement. So I have a podcast coming up next week at the FIU Center for Leadership. We'll be, I'll be a part of their Leading Well series on the 24th. And so the goal of the VA, I set very explicit ones around marketing. She needs to pitch me for at least five. She told me she specializes just in booking people on podcasts and she has about a 35% close rate. So I'm looking forward to having that engagement as well as we go into the summer. And then um, I asked some of my cl clients if they would um, help me with the marketing and they're all about supporting small business. And before I had even put that request out, TrackPhone, which is one of my clients, came to me and said, hey, we'd like to feature you as part of the services we're offering to our clients, to our um, employees during COVID. And so they asked if they could feature me on their social media. So I gladly said yes. And that's just another way that I began to market my business. So I'll tell you my biggest aha, digital marketing is not my confidence. I'm a great coach. I'm an amazing consultant, but I just needed to know enough to set the right KPIs so that I could be an excellent CEO.
Thank you for your time. So Ebony, you've been uh, really uh, busy with all these things and congratulations on your accreditation. That is amazing. Thank you. Very awesome. But uh, I, I like all these different moves that you made. I also like that you got more engaged on uh, social media. That's fantastic. Um, I think you have a great presence, great energy. You're very articulate, um, you know, um, and I think that you would be great on video. And even if you did video ads or you just did short video posts, and, you know, if you want to do virtual speaking, then it's important for uh, the event organizers to see, um, to see you on video before. So I, I really encourage you to go that way. I, I know you may not be comfortable, but uh, from what I've seen, uh, you, you are, are great on video. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I want to echo Alex. I think Ebony's the type of entrepreneur that takes the bull by the horns. And the fact that she looked at things in a different manner of what do I need to teach myself to be a better customer and a better client to all these other companies that I'm outsourcing to um, makes her a better entrepreneur and a better business person. So I commend you for learning everything in the background so that you get your money's worth. And I love how you challenge everyone that you hire to give you those KPIs. So congrats, Ebony. I look Thank forward you. to seeing that video, Ed. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Thanks, everybody. You know, I, I, I often hear from folks say that they are, um, you know, taking BizHack's course as a business owner, not because they want to learn how to run their own Facebook ads, but because they want to know if the person they hire, whether it's on their staff or in an agency, is doing a good job. And one of the things when a business owner tells me they have an agency and they're not doing a good job for them, I ask them, well, how do you know? And often you'll find that business owners don't know enough. They haven't mastered the basics to be able to actually evaluate the success of the people they hire and have running their digital marketing. Um, it's not an unrealistic expectation that you should be able to attribute revenue as we see with our group in five weeks. Uh, you should be able to attribute revenue to your digital marketing efforts. And I think that Ebony's insight that <clears throat> eight months was enough time with her agency, but also that the agency, but that she didn't know who the right agency to hire the next agency would be. Uh, I think that insight leading you into the course was a, a really savvy one and one I welcome. So this case study is an extraordinary example of how sometimes feeling like you don't know what you're doing doesn't matter because you know your business and if you know your business then your marketing is going to be better than if you outsource it to someone who doesn't know your business so i want to welcome antoinette patterson uh and and her uh, one world learning study her one world learning center case study welcome antoinette okay um so my name of my business is one world learning center it's a child care center and we um teach kids ages infant to five years old. And we have a, a summer camp and an after camp um, for ages five to nine. I gotta go to my next slide. Okay, I gotta figure out how to work this. Okay. The story of me. I attended St. Thomas University and I got an undergraduate and a graduate degree in accounting. And I also am a certified public accountant. I also went to Harvard School of Business and got my certification in achieving excellence in community development. So my story of me is really not about me, it's about my son. Um, for me to get where I am to open up a child care center had nothing to do with me at all. I had no interest in wanting to have a child care center, but I'm glad I am where I am today. And that's all because of a severe injury that happened to my son. He was about 16 months old. And it was a local child care center in Miami-Dade County where he um, actually severed uh, his tongue. And um, what motivated me more to open it because I was really angry, I was really upset, but I said, let me take that anger and make it into something positive. So um, I decided to open up a child care center. And the problem with that whole incident that happened was I was never notified. No one never called me on my job. They never called um, his father to let him to let us know what had happened. We only found out once we got him home and he started crying. And then we noticed that was an issue. 
So One World Learning Center was born in 2005. So I was so excited. So now I figure that all child care centers are not out to educate or to really keep kids safe. They're just high class babysitters. That was how I took that whole incident that occurred with my child. So why did I take this course? So I want to understand social media. So you know when you think that you know what you know and you get out there and you do a little post you know, a little Facebook uh, ad on Facebook with your friends and you say, I want to add the little boost. And of course that return didn't really return any um, revenue back in my pocket. It just let people know that my school was doing something. So I want to understand social media more. I want to understand how to run Facebook's ad ads. And I want to see how I can reach customers to come to my school in the location where my center is probably within a three mile radius. And then I also want to understand the verbiage of setting up a Facebook ad. So I was very glad that I had an opportunity to meet Dan and we were both graduated with the uh, small business Goldman Sachs and we were cohort 18 graduates. So I'm glad I met you Dan and it turned out that me not only taking this course to understand Facebook or to understand social media marketing, but it also helped me because I'm also redesigning my website. So I learned things that um, Alex was teaching us in some of the classes about pixels. And I'm like, what is a pixel? You know, and you got to make sure it's on your website. And then I didn't know that we had to have a private policy on our website. So me taking this course also helped me to make sure that when I go to my website designer, during his process of designing my website, you know, I try to act like I knew everything. I think, okay, you got to make sure you have the pixels in and get private policy in. So, you know, I'm all excited because I learned a little something. So, thank you. That, that was a big help. So, my problem was at my school is I need to figure out how I want to grow my after school program, how I want to grow my summer camp. So, I went online and got uh, the latest scores with the FSA reading test for elementary kids, third graders. And I noticed that a good number of kids were scoring very low in reading and they, some of them were not passing that reading portion of the FSA test. So I said, I need to be able to offer something. So what can I do to draw parents into my school? And it has to be something different from what a lot of aftercare programs offer. What can I hone in on to bring parents to my school? And so, my problem is, hey, let's help them out and get these young children up to understand reading, how to comprehend reading. And so that was the problem and that's what I want to address. So the solution is to teach children how to read and comprehend what they have read, to help children understand keywords and meaning, uh, mean keywords and meaning when they're answering questions and to get them prepared so that when that time comes, they are ready because reading isn't everything that we do. So I ran a campaign ad, no, I ran a lead generation ad on Facebook. So I was like so excited because the turnaround from me running this lead ad on Facebook opened up a lot of doors. People found out about my school. And so my daily budget was only $15 a day. I made sure I only targeted female uh, mothers, pretty much mothers that are between the ages of 18 and 55, and I stayed within my radius of my school, and I pulled out interest of what I think may be to target some of those uh, mothers that are out there on Facebook. The audience that we were, that my potential reach was 210,000 210, people. I can't see this, hold on, let me take this off. So I ran an ad, and I also did a campaign uh, ad for video view. So I had my campaign ad with video views running at the same time my lead generation ad ran. I had a lot of people that I reached with my video ad, but I didn't get the results. But with my lead ad, I had a lot of people and I'm still getting lead ads, people call, uh, going on my Facebook ad and giving their information. So right now I'm at 35 um, raw leads that I'm calling to get them to um, enroll, whether it's be in my summer camp program or to come enroll in my school come August. So the, 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 the ad did. So I spent about $203. I reached 5,082 people 
And so far I have 31 leads and as of today, this morning I'm at 35 leads and still counting. So my cost per lead, just based on the 31 leads at the time that I did my PowerPoint presentation was 31 and that's $6.55 for each lead that I've gotten in so far. So that's like a big plus if you really think because Facebook ads or any ads that you run, especially the lead ads, it really works. So I'm excited about that, like really excited. So what is my customer acquisition cost? So based on the number, the 31 um, leads that I received so far, we estimate a close rate of 16%. So that's five new customers at a cost of $40.60, just to acquire those five customers from my digital Facebook ad that I ran, and it's still running as of right now. So what is my lifetime value? So I, um, the parents that I spoke to, have i'm looking at about two infants that i'm going to enroll and three two-year-olds so i we did an average of an infant staying with me for no more than three years revenue 203 dollars per week for 50 weeks over a three-year time that's thirty thousand four hundred and fifty dollars the expenses five thousand seventy five dollars per year over three years that's fifteen thousand two hundred twenty five dollars what would be my net profit on those two infants for my lifetime value? That's $15,225. So that's pretty good considering what I only spent on my digital marketing ad for my, um, to get kids to enroll in my school. Now, although I focus on summer, I'm getting kids to come for my August term to start in August. My two-year-olds, I averaged two-year-old up to, to say about two years. My net profit for my two-year-olds would be $11,400. So if you think about it, my cost and my lifetime value, well, that's pretty good considering what I've spent. So here's, my, so here's the marketing rule. If your life, uh, lifetime value exceeds your cost to acquire, you're doing really good. So if you look at my return on investment, that's 317 times over what I spent. So that's $64,500 in revenue on a $200 ad. Can't, can't beat that, you can't ask for more. I mean, that's like pretty cool, right? So um, that's $370 in revenue for every dollar I spent for my ad. So what's next for One World Learning Center? What's next for me? I need to set up an email template I'm going to use MailChimp because I learned about that also in BizHack. I want to redefine my audience, okay? So not only when I, do I want to run lead ads, I want to run other type of ads that we learn during BizHack, during our, class, during our course. And the reason why I want to do that because I want when parents or anyone that's on Facebook, because you know a lot of young people are on Facebook, I want them to be able to, as they're going through, one word learning center constantly popping up, constantly popping up. So you always got to keep being out there and letting everyone know that you exist. Because if you think about um, McDonald's or Burger King, who's been here for years, but if you notice, they're always running. They're always running some type of advertisement. And that's what I want to do. I want to keep my name out there. So everybody can say, remember that one world, one world, where are they? And I'm still getting parents today that are still calling me now. I spoke to like two new parents that came on my uh, lead for my lead ad that's asking me about wanting to enroll my, to my school. So like kudos for me, right? And the other thing is I wanna have a waiting list. And I know that I'm gonna to get to that waiting list. The only interesting thing about childcare and waiting list that I'm gonna have is that um, a lot of the kids that attend my school, because I serve low to moderate income family, families, their cost of their childcare is pretty much almost 100% paid. So me having a waiting list for that, okay, that's fine, I'll have that. So maybe they'll go open enroll in another school, but my thing is to capture them back over to me because I don't want the child or the mother to get too comfortable where they are. Because like, this is the school, this is the way to be. So that's uh, my PowerPoint slide. So thank you very much. I mean, Antoinette, those are extraordinary results. I am so impressed with uh, how you built this and how you learned Thank about you. it and how you're still getting leads. Um, you know, last time you had 11 leads, now you already have 35. 
I yeah. hope that you're going to keep building on it. And as you put in new things like email marketing and other things, I just think that uh, hopefully this is going to continue growing for you as you try new things. So congratulations. Thank you. Anthony, I, I really love how, how you, uh, you express the, 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 the CAC and the LTV, the customer acquisition cost and the lifetime value. Because, uh, you know, if everybody understands the fundamentals of that, you could see your way to the million dollar mark or the $10 million mark or wherever it is that you want to go from a revenue standpoint. And so I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a nice um, piece of lesson to take away even from this, pres from this presentation that you did uh, just for everyone to, to even understand how you calculate those and see uh, what exactly is it going to cost you. And it's amazing uh, for those people who think that Facebook is not the place for their, uh, for, for, for their business or doesn't have the audience. You really should be thinking again, because look what Antoinette did. Look what uh, her result proved that it, could, it, can, it can actually happen to anyone that has a great product, right audience, um, and is generating, she's still generating leads, guys. And so she could already visualize her way to the seven and eight figures just by using this principle. Love it. Thank you, Ricardo. You know, Antoinette, um, I want to announce publicly that this is officially the single most profitable campaign in the history of BizHack. That's six years. I am so proud of you. <laughs> Done. <laughs> by your digital marketing expertise. And I'm so excited for the business that you're building and the change you're making in this world. You know, I know it's heart driven, but uh, growth is happening from the head as well. And, you know, thank you for taking a chance on us. Thank you so much for the work you do in the world. And I'm so excited for the next chapter in your, your life and your business's life. Thank you, Dan, I appreciate it. This case study is from Mandy Diaz with Potty in a Box. Potty in a Box is a really fun uh, company that is, gives you birthday parties in a box for your dog. Mandy, and uh, let you share how you came to run Potty in a Box. Thank you very much. Let me share my screen. Can everybody see my screen? Can you see my screen? Okay, good. Yes, I can't. Okay, here we go. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mandy Diaz, and my BizHack Real Life campaign is based on my product, Body in a Box. I've always been a dog lover. Four have owned me in, in this life. Zorro when I was five, Sparky when I was 12, Nuba in my 20s, and now Bo Handsome. Nuba, though, came to teach me how to be a dog mom and the best one ever. One day I took him to daycare and his teacher mentioned another dog named Bailey was having a birthday. Coincidentally, it was Nuba's birthday that weekend as well. I worked in the events industry and thought to myself, the competition is on. I couldn't let Bailey's mom beat me at this party. So I looked for birthday party items for dogs everywhere and I couldn't find anything I liked. I was able to pull off a stylish party by piecing together a combination of items. What a celebration of love this was. And this is where the light bulb came on. Even though Nuba has crossed over the rainbow bridge, the memories of love from this party will last a lifetime. And this love is what we want to share with the world. My name is Mandy Diaz, and I am the founder of Party in a Box, the first birthday party decor kit for dogs. My kids, my, my, my challenge was understanding Facebook audiences. And even though I am the first um, product like this in the market, um, getting for people to, to find me is a challenge. And creating the need for dog parents to want a new product in the market is a challenge as well. Also generating quality traffic to my website and converting that website traffic to either sign up to my newsletter or make a, or make a purchase while learning all of the behind the scenes that go into creating a website was, was the biggest challenge for me. Um, as I took the course, um, there was a lot of amazing aha moments and solutions um, that, I was, that, that I found um, 
one of them, one of the key points for me was creating a specific audience personas on Facebook based on my research and targeted them uh, directly. We, I created um, retargeting ads to these personas to continue to create the one of my product. Updating my website and trying to find different options to include a spin the wheel game so clients can sign up for a discount. I updated my blog and using keyword tools to help my page relevant and clients engaged and converting quality leads, converting quality, oops, sorry, I lost my train of thought here. Converting quality leads to sales and engaging them with a monthly newsletter. So if anybody knows them, sorry, but <laughs> these are my customer personas. I have, um, I have two different types of personas. Um, and, and, and again, the exercises in, in this BizHack uh, course helped me create a, a, a targeted focus on who these two people were. My ad was a 15 second ad um, with a beautiful uh, music behind it, um, targeted specifically towards these two uh, customer personas. My results, I got the highest number of clicks on my Facebook ads, which I'd never before. I boosted ads before. I really didn't know what I was doing. So when you don't know what you're doing, you're kind of like throwing money in the air. Um, but I did get the highest number of clicks on my Facebook ads. Um, I reorganized uh, the product list on my website to show low hanging fruit items, uh, offering, um, for example, I have three different types of products on my website. Um, I have bandanas, which are the lowest cost uh, item on my, on, in my catalog. And I have two different size birthday party boxes um, for clients. Um, converting website traffic to sign up to my newsletter and continue to engaging these leads via email, now knowing what I'm doing using MailChimp and, um, and email campaigns following up with all these people that sign up for my newsletter. I have scheduled blog content for the next two months uh, using keywords um, to keep my clients engaged um, and focused on email marketing campaign and follow up and again, officially launching a newsletter. Um, my marketing funnel. So basically, um, my first campaign was a brand awareness campaign. I got uh, four, four, as you guys can see, 4,452 impressions, um, 37 link clicks. Then I retargeted it um, to these uh, customer personas. And I got a 34% increase in online store sessions and a 200% increase in online store sessions by Facebook. My, my ad ran for three days. I had a budget of $50 and I got two sales for a total of $58. Uh, my biggest ahas was to laser focus on my audiences and my customer journey. Organize, I organized my content calendar for my blog, email marketing, and newsletter, and created uh, an effective process for myself. I mapped out and set up an effective nurture email campaign for my clients. And another great aha was understanding my ad results with my coach and what to look for to continue to work on my ads efficiently. I recently ran my third ad. Um, it's live right now, and um, I'm super excited to see the results. So. Um, What's next for me? I'm going to launch new ad campaigns and start testing them with my core audiences. I'm going to create a few more customer personas and continue testing different products and ads. My blog content is key. Email marketing campaigns, newsletters, and scale potty in a box. Thank you very much. If you have any dogs, visit my website, pottybox.com. Again, it's not party, it's pot like a pot. Thank you very much. <laughs> Way to go, Mandy. Mandy, that was great. Uh, you have such great uh, energy, the, and it's such a fun concept. Uh, and everybody loves pets and animals, so I mean, uh, it's sure to be a hit. You know, your ads were great. Um, probably you have a persona in, in families that have a kid, you know, a kid and a pet. Oh, Alex, you muted yourself. I muted myself, okay. So probably you have a persona in, in a family that has a uh, a child and the pet because the two personas you showed I don't think they have children uh, but probably it's even more fun when there's a child in the family so uh, hopefully you can uh, figure out the customer mapping 
uh, you know, um, and, uh, and this will uh, bring you results. So congrats. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and as Mandy's coach, it was really fun to see how her audience evolved. I think when we first started, there was, you know, you think pets, you think everybody loved pets um, and that it would be easy to target ads towards, you know, basically everybody in America that loves dogs, but you really have to be intricate about who you're pitching because not everybody um, wants to do a dog party, not everybody can afford it, but she did a really good job of really looking internally at who her core people were, who were her top clients, and developed a formula to create an audience that I think is just gonna keep improving every single time. So congrats, Mandy. Thank you. You're getting a lot of love on the chat, Mandy. Your energy is amazing. Thank you so much. And I'm glad to say that Michelle is back, everybody. <laughs> this case study is with Michelle Banesh. Michelle is an extraordinary example of someone who started out working at MenuMen as their head of sales and then went on to take over the company. She was also handed a little bit of a mess on the marketing side. Her predecessors did not keep the contact information in a systematic way of their customers, let alone their prospects. And so, and so though they've been in business for many years and have done business with literally thousands of restaurants, uh, Michelle had to spend nights and weekends cobbling together the most basic elements uh, of a foundation of a marketing strategy, doing it while pivoting her company in a time of real peril for restaurants due to COVID-19. It's with uh, incredible excitement that I present you Michelle Banesh of Menu Men. Hi guys. Okay. Good afternoon. I am Michelle Benish with Menu Men. Menu Men is a manufacturer of custom design menus. We were founded in 1968 by my father and grandfather. And um, we are uh, one of only two that are solely based in the United States. I started out with the company because I found myself uh, newly married in New York City and interviewing for the same type of job I had in Miami, which was international marketing. I realized that if I was going to be traveling that much and uh, spending you know, 60 to 70 hours a week at the job wasn't any use to get married. So I reached out to the family and asked to start a, a division of the company in New York City. We were, I was there for three years and uh, grew the sales for many men by 30%. What I realized when I was there is that sometimes the, the quality of the product wasn't as detailed as I would like it to be. So I moved down with my husband and a newborn baby, came to many men and helped the corporate office really concentrate on the details. Because of this service, I was able to now say that I have worked with the best names in the hospitality industry, and we have an amazing product that actually uh, wins awards all over the world, not just the United States. And since that time, I have taken over 100% ownership of the company and, um, and love each and everything we do. So we were having the best year ever. And uh, the sales uh, for the last six years have just rapidly increased. And then we got COVID-19 or 17. And literally within two days, the, the phone stopped ringing. And two days after that, there was just not a sale to be had. Um, so I had to go back to the drawing board, see what we could do in the industry. And I had started in, in 2017 with 10,000 small businesses as uh, Dan um, referred to that we were a part of a new product, a, a touchless menu product that was very interactive. But at that time, the, the business model didn't um, lay itself to be active in our, the hospitality industry. But the concept was. And with that, um, I was working on reopening with the QR code touchless menus. And I reached out to Erica, my coach, and said, okay, this is a new product. This is what we got to do. This is how we have to go out there and, and um, base our new Facebook campaigns on. So this QR code is an interactive um, touchless menu. We're simply through an, a, a QR code, any iPhone or um, Android can just scan it and the menu will pop up on your own screen. Um, we designed two different campaigns. First campaign um, had 9,322 impressions with 92 clicks, seven leads, and one customer base. 
I went back uh, to this first campaign and worked on the, the execution, not just about my, my targeting my market better and my audience, but um, having better graphics in it, improving the, um, the soundtrack behind it, and shorting from 19 seconds to 16 seconds. So more of that, that target market that Facebook wants you to, to do. And that led me to a, um, the second campaign of 16,808 impressions, 343 links, uh, 19 leads, and seven customers. While I did both of these campaigns, I also launched um, mail campaigns at the same time, focusing on the, on the same product. And I do believe that this had, has also led to um, better impressions and, and the phones ringing uh, more frequently and, and getting more um, customers from it. As far as the next, well, I, like I said, I went back to the drawing board. I'm actually creating um, a touchless interactive menu. So it will be based on a QR, but you'll actually be able to order from your phone um, and get uh, nutrition um, information and um, sign out. So you never have to wait for your, your waiter again. Um, and I do believe that because of COVID-19, the business model is ready for it. Um, people don't mind having technology at the dining room table. And um, I will be doing my third campaign this week based on QR and then hopefully my final product will be ready in three weeks and I'll roll out an even bigger campaign. So thank you so much for your time. I mean, uh, Michelle, I'm so impressed by how you pivoted and you went from not being digital at all to being a digital business with the uh, QR codes. And as you know, then this becomes a part of the customer's journey is the QR code and the menu because you can then develop that product further into loyalty programs, you know, for the restaurant uh, and even maybe delivery options and different things that come out of this new digital product that you've created. So well, we just, I think it's a, it's a very promising future. Thank you. We just launched our um, first hotel. So I'm into Four Seasons in Palm Beach for all of their in-room directories. So with your track record, the brands you've worked with and you're, I guess, one of the first movers into the QR codes and you have such great brands. I mean, I think the sky is the limit, you know? Hopefully. So, That's the dream. Awesome. Michelle is the example of um, those type of people that just, they understand balance is BS, but somehow manage to do it. And on many occasions, I, I saw her working late, working weekends. I don't think you've stopped since all of this started, like many, many, you know, business owners and entrepreneurs, but to take that on on top of the business angle and still do a wonderful job in your campaign says a lot about who you are as a person and your drive to succeed. So congrats, Michelle. Thank you. And thank you, Dan and, and Erica and Alex for all that you've taught me in a very short amount of time. Um, I'm sure I say this on behalf of all of the cohort 13. There's so much information to digest, um, but I, I really appreciated all of it. Well, we appreciate you and everyone from, COVID, uh, from the COVIDs. Uh, I'm used to uh, cursing the COVIDs, but now we're celebrating you. Um, the, the COVID disease versus the COVID extraordinary group of entrepreneurs. Um, I wanted to share with you this learning journey. Um, these are, we are constantly monitoring the progress of our students as they go through this course experience. And this is a, an extraordinary testament to the group learning that happened from the beginning just five weeks ago uh, to where we ended up today. You can see on all of the 20 main learning objectives, there was incredible learning happening across the board for the whole group. Um, and uh, the level, uh, the, basically we begin to consider um, group uh, mastery at the level seven. Um, and so you can see that uh, this group uh, mastered more than three quarters of those learning objectives as a group uh, and in a, just a matter of weeks. You guys have so much to be proud of. We saw your hard work and your dedication and your uh, incredible spirit, and we wanted to salute you and also give you some numbers to show that uh, there is a demonstrable, incredible increase in knowledge and confidence from all of you over the course of this time. 
We're gonna send uh, a couple more thank you gifts raffles and Lilia will uh, give us the names. The first is from Marta Siebenhar of Cultured Innovations, an extraordinary um, consulting firm, works with a lot of arts uh, and other types of nonprofits, arts organizations and nonprofits. And the winner of an Inspiration Cards card deck is? Alejandra Silva. Alejandra Silva from CIC, I think. Uh, congratulations. Um, our next um, gift is a $50 gift card uh, for any product from Michelle's Menu Men. Uh, and the winner is? Rosemary Ravenel. Rosemary, one of our featured speakers from a few weeks ago. Welcome, Rosemary, and congratulations. Uh, it is with incredible honor and distinction that I want to welcome our keynote speaker, Juana Jones of Jolly Creatives. Uh, Juana has uh, more than a decade of experience as a storyteller and fundraiser. She's worked at the Florida Department of Health and the Atlanta Housing Authority, and she's a graduate of Florida State University. But it's really as the founder of Jolly Creatives, a storytelling and branding agency, where I really think that Juana has um, shown her extraordinary skill, nuance, and intelligence. And uh, BizHack hired Juana uh, to help us with our social media, and BizHack has relied on Juana uh, on how to think about this question, should my brand take a stand during this extraordinary moment that we're living in? Uh, so it's with great uh, pride and, and incredible gratitude that I hand uh, our keynote address for our 13th graduation celebration to Juana Jones of Jolly Creatives, a two-time BizHack alumnus. Welcome, Juana. Thanks, Dan. Um, let me see here. Hold on, uh, share screen. Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Um, uh, congratulations to the graduates. Um, that is incredible. Dan, I'm s congratulations to you and the team for um, having such amazing results this, this time around. I think that that's everyone's presentations have been very impressive. So um, talking a little bit about, you know, should your brand take a stand? Um, so that's something that I think a question has been on everyone's mind um, lately, uh, regardless of your personal feelings about everything that's been happening in the world, um, you know, you're thinking, should my business have something to say about it? So before we get into that, I'll tell you a little bit about me. Um, I've been a business owner since 2016. Jolly Creatives is a boutique marketing agency. We service small businesses and nonprofits. Um, and we primarily focus on working with those that are launched and led by women of color. Um, I have over 12 years of experience working in various industries, so universities, large and small nonprofits, um, law firms, medical practices, design and marketing agencies, event companies, CPAs, supply chain companies, municipalities, um, and network organizations, um, and more. So I'm very proud of my heritage. I am a black woman, and um, I have, you know, a variety of, of um, uh, I come from a variety of, of people across the diaspora, um, and I just celebrate that in the way I wear my hair, the foods I cook, the jokes I tell, um, the organizations that I'm a part of. And um, so, you know, with everything that's been going on, um, it, has, it has definitely uh, affected me on a personal level and affected the the people that I uh, come into contact with on a regular basis. Um, so I definitely am a strong believer in storytelling and brand impact. I think that whatever your brand does, um, whatever the services, whatever the product, you definitely want to have some sort of impact um, with your storytelling and uh, with your business as a whole. I've been featured in the South Florida Times, Gospel Truth Magazine, and a few podcasts. And most recently, I was featured on the Skim podcast. I don't know if you all are familiar with the Skim, but it's a news outlet that is for women on the go who want to get, you know, the latest headlines. And so they have a podcast that they launched recently, and I was one of the small business spotlights. Um, in addition to being a business owner, I am a writer. I write fiction, um, and in addition to writing web copy and, um, and stuff for my clients, I also am an artist, I paint, I'm a wife, mother, daughter, sister, and friend. 
So what does taking a stand look like? What does it mean? Um, in 2020, it looks like, you know, having a stay at home message, supporting, um, you know, the, or promoting the CDC guidelines and, you know, all the things that have been coming out about how to stay safe during COVID-19. It looks like supporting the recent legislation and things that have been happening with the LGBTQ plus community. Um, and uh, specifically what I'm going to talk about is, um, you know, taking a stand in 2020 right now today looks like uh, having solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement, specifically uh, with anti-racism and uh, police brutality, standing against those things. Why is it important? Um, so brand storytelling, as you all know, I've heard you all talk about your story of me, so you all um, are definitely aware of the importance of brand storytelling. It's how you stand out, it's how you connect, it's how you eventually, you know, generate revenue. Um, you, because your story is, is impactful and moving to people. Um, a lot of your storytelling is built on your values. And a lot of those values come from the personal values of the founders of companies. Um, and I think that as small business owners, we definitely need to make sure that we have a corporate and social responsibility um, aspect to our businesses. Um, you know, and sometimes that's easy to do. It's not really controversial to feed the homeless. It's not really uh, polarizing to read to children from underserved communities. Um, but, you know, sometimes you can't always do business as usual. And so, particularly with what's been going on lately, um, you know, you, you have to ask yourself, do we stay silent? Do we speak up? Um, and which one is in alignment? Is staying silent in alignment with our brand values and, and, and the story that we tell, um, or is speaking up in alignment? So how do you take a stand? Um, when you decide, okay, we're going to speak up, we have something to say about this, you definitely want to check that your stance is in alignment with your brand values. You definitely want to assess your own level of comfort or your personal level of comfort as the business owner. Um, and you also want to assess the level of comfort that whoever's helping you craft this message. Um, you definitely want to make sure your messaging is mindful. So that probably requires some research if you are not intimately familiar with, um, you know, with social justice issues or with race, you know, anti-racism work or anything like that, you definitely want to make sure that you do your research. Um, I would say that you don't need to shy away from transparency. So if it's, you know, we've never done anything like this before. We, we are, you know, we're, we're talking to you about how to make vegan waffles. We, you know, this is not something we do, but we did think it was important because it's a value of ours that, you know, everyone has access to whatever, whatever. Um, you definitely want to make sure that the messaging is placed strategically. So if you, if it's an email campaign, if it's a tweet, if it's a tweet, you don't want it to be too short. You know, there's, you only have so many characters that you can use in a tweet, but you definitely want to make sure that your placement is strategic so that the statement lands um, with the intent that you have. You don't want it to come across as not enough. Um, and then, you know, on the next slide, I'll give some big brand examples. So how to take a stand the right way. So I picked these two, um, these two companies, not necessarily because their stances align with mine personally, but because um, they actually have a history of having values that are rooted in and align with the statements that they made. So Ben and Jerry's had a very bold statement, uh, you know, we must dismantle white supremacy, silence, silence is not an option. Fenty Beauty had also um, a very bold statement and, you know, and so both of these brands have a history, but also they included how to take action. So not only how can you take action if you want to participate or stand with them in this stance against police brutality and, and in this anti-racism work, they also you know, demonstrated what they're doing. Um, and it is congruent with things that they've done all along. So Fenty Beauty, if you don't know, is Rihanna's um, uh, beauty line. And they're all about you know, uh, very inclusive shades. They, they were making history, I think maybe a year or so ago, with having, you know, much, uh, 
very, very rich diversity in the shades of makeup that they were offering um, to, to people who wanted to purchase their makeup products. And then Ben & Jerry's has a long history of doing social justice work. So they don't just have crazy, funky ice cream names, um, but they actually have met um, like one of their founders at, uh, at an event. And, you know, so just they they definitely have a longstanding history of doing uh, social justice work, supporting social justice causes. So how to take a stand, uh, maybe the wrong way or not that, you know, in ways that don't land. And these are examples. Um, so virtue signaling is something that I've been seeing going around lately. Um, a lot of people feel like, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I don't know if you all know, but there was a campaign going around on Instagram. Um, it was Blackout Tuesday. And so there was some mixed messaging about what exactly it meant, but eventually people got on the same page. And so a lot of people were posting uh, black boxes and I saw a lot of people saying, you know, oh, you're just virtue signaling. Basically, you're just trying to guilt people into jumping on the bandwagon of some cause. You know, you're, now you're saying that you have the moral high ground because now you, now all of a sudden you support, you know, things like Black Lives Matter. And now all of a sudden you're against racism and police brutality. You're just trying to make people feel better, but your social media post isn't going to do anything. Um, and so, you know, depending on how you release your message if you're not strategic, if it doesn't align with your brand values, if you're not transparent, if your messaging isn't mindful, um, it can definitely come across as virtue signaling or it cannot land with your audience, with your followers. Um, so for example, Starbucks had some inconsistent stances. I think that they were allowing their employees to wear um, things in support of LGBTQ plus rights and causes and pride month and then they were not allowing people to wear things in support of black lives matter and anti-racism and so they dialed it back they went back and you know they changed their they changed their stance um, but at the end of the day it looks inconsistent so do you support causes uh, rooted in equity or do you not support you know do you want your employees to do something do you not want them to do something and so um so that's not that's if you're going to take a stand you probably want to try to be as consistent as possible. Um, uh, empty statements with no action. So I have the Popeyes tweet here. So Popeyes said, you know, Popeyes is nothing without Black Lives. And that was the tweet. That was the message. Um, and then, you know, Twitter, people on Twitter and people uh, across the internet sort of blasted the company. What does that mean? What are you saying? What is that like? Is that because you have a, a black woman as your mascot? Is that because you're saying black people like fried chicken? Is that because like, what are you saying? What does that mean? Why, what is that? Um, and so then they, you know, followed up and they sort of, you know, expanded the, the tweet, you know, there's no room for injustice and we commit to strengthening, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but you definitely want to make sure that if you do put something out, if you decide to have a, a, a stance on this issue, that you certainly, um, you know, that you, there, there's actionable uh, pieces of your statement. Um, so like, for example, uh, Dan has recently been saying things and then now BizHack has the scholarship program to purposefully and specifically expand uh, diversity in, in, in their classrooms and in their spaces. Um, so history, uh, the history of questionable business practices, again, Nike. So, you know, Nike has recently, people have been saying, oh, you have unethical labor practices and now you know you're saying that these lives matter you know what what is it so um you know in today's day and age especially with cancel culture it's a little difficult sometimes for people brands influencers celebrities um to come back and say i once had a problematic thought i don't anymore i once had a problematic practice i've learned i've grown um but if you you know if you if for for some reason your small business or you as a person um, have done something that you've grown from you know that goes back to um in the earlier slides where i said that transparency if you are going to take a stance you know you can you can have that level of transparency that says you know maybe we didn't always value this but uh, you know, there's been a level of consciousness that's been uh, raised in the public and in, in, in mass and you know that that's happened to us too. So does your brand value inclusivity uh, representation certainly matters, um, as you know from the story of me from your segmentation from building out your customer personas, you know that people want to see themselves. Um, and people certainly identify parts of themselves where they spend their money so whether that's a t shirt whether that's a daycare whether that's a dog grooming company um, there's something there that connects. Um, and it connects on, on a lot of times on a deeper level than just, oh, I really like this shirt. It's like, no, this shirt says something. And that is a part of who I see myself as being as a person. 
Um, so you definitely want to make sure that, you know, if it's a brand value, then you definitely want to make sure that, you know, um, diversity is there in your images. Um, so, you know, it's definitely been hard. I think recently we've seen a lot of, uh, a lot more websites um, that have images that are, to certainly include more diverse images, um, but there have there are there is still a ways to go. So you know you may go to some uh, stock stock image websites, and it's a little difficult to find um, diverse images that you know that are that are inclusive. Um, but it's important that you do that. There is an app that I use. Um, or that I did use when I first had my son. And, you know, it's just milestones and things like that to keep track of for the baby, but I follow them also on Instagram. And they overwhelmingly post um, white families. And I mean, I love the app. It's nothing, you know, it's, it's whatever. But recently, they didn't necessarily take a stance on Black Lives Matter, but they did. I noticed that they posted a Black father and son. And so I commented, this is great, you know, so please be intentional. Um, and I say that to say that, like I said, it's difficult to find diverse images. It's not difficult to find it, you know, images of non people of color doing doing all sorts of things that everyone does. But it's just very easy to find images of white people doing those things. And so if you are going to try and be more inclusive in your representation and your postings and whatever, then you definitely want to make sure that you intentionally seek out um, diverse images. Are you intentionally diverse in your hiring practices? Not just staff who may say, oh, I'm just a person of one, um, but are you intentionally including, you know, contractors that are women, people of color, vendors, you know, are you, are you being intentional in those practices? Um, are you actively engaging with organizations and causes that demonstrate inclusivity as a value? So if you're not, why? Where can you improve? If it's, is it authentic? If not, why? Where can you improve? So if you feel like it's, this is not, this is not true to me. I don't want to take a stance on this because this is not true to me. Well, then, you know, do you want to ask yourself, well, why isn't it true to me that I value like seeing, you know, multiple different kinds of people? Um, so 72% uh, of CEOs in top Fortune 500 companies are white males, while less than 1% are African-American females. Um, implicit biases occur in hiring. It's just true. <laughs> so you can do the research. Um, but you must, it, it is important to be intentional. Um, just like the images that I talked about, you know, you definitely want to be intentional in seeking out diverse hires. Um, it certainly is, expands your company's landscape and lens. Um, there's a there's a couple of stats from a McKinsey study here. Um, you, you know, uh, the more di basically the more diverse your company is with racial and ethnic diversity and 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 gender, um, you certainly have higher financial returns. Um, so even if you say I'm not in business to be, you know, if you feel if you feel like. Um, equity is a political issue. If you say, well, I'm not in business to do that. I'm not in business. I'm in business to make money. None of that stuff matters to me. Well, here's a money and business uh, correlated reason to diversify your workplace. So again, you know, being purposeful about diversity, it expands your company lens, it strengthens your company values. Um, and it is just one example of an actionable step that contributes to overall equity. And I like this little comic here. Um, I saw a client of mine posted on her LinkedIn page and I thought it was funny. It's basically just a woman sitting in front of a group of, you know, status quo, uh, you know, looking guys and, you know, they say, well, what can you bring to this company? And so this is just sort of demonstrative of the barriers that um, a lot of people are facing and why it's up to us as small business owners to be intentional about helping people uh, break through those barriers to entry. So what is the right answer? Should my brand take a stand? There isn't one. Um, like I said, you know, you want to just ask yourself if I'm comfortable with this, if this aligns for me um, and, you know, you may feel like I'm, I'm just one person or, oh, I only have a few followers online or, you know, we sell a lot of things, but there aren't many people aren't paying attention to what we do. I would, I would, I would suggest that you rethink that. Um, you know, you may think that you're small potatoes, but if you have a customer base, they are likely curious about where your brand falls. Um, so, you know, it can be a little jarring. I know I asked myself, we had scheduled tweets and scheduled things for clients, for myself. Um, and, you know, I talked to my team and was like, you know, some of these things, um, it doesn't really, it doesn't really feel right in this particular moment um, to be posting 
frivolous things if you haven't said anything about what's happening. Now, for some of my clients, that it's not on their radar. And they're like, that is not a thing we do. We have our cause. Our cause is this. We're focused on this. Um, and so, you know, and so with that, they don't, they don't want to touch it. And then you have some clients that are like, this is this is right in line, you know, with what I want to do. I have a couple of clients who are attorneys and they're like, you know, a few weeks ago, they were, you know, texting me on a Saturday, like we need to get up. We want to offer, you know, free legal representation for protesters. We, you know, we, that's what we want to do. We want to do it. We want to do it. You know, so, um, so that in and of itself is um, a stance that is directly related to a brand value um, of those firms. So, like I said, there's no right answer, but these are certainly things to consider for yourself. Um, for my biz hackers, I have an exclusive offer. Uh, we can talk about your brand messaging, social media, website, messaging, marketing plan, any of your content, anything you would like to review or talk about. Um, we can do that. Normally, it is $50 for a 30-minute coaching session, but for my biz hackers, it will be $25, so it's 50% off. If you email us at marketing at jollycreatives.com, Com. In the subject line, put biz hacker offer. Provide your business details and your contact information, and we will follow up with you to schedule. Follow us, please, online. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Jolly Creatives. And we also, on our blog, I meant to put that on the slide, we have a specific blog talking about, it goes into, I guess, maybe a little bit more detail um, about, you know, should your brand take a stand. So it's jollycreatives.com backslash blog. Thank you so much, Dan, for having me. And again, congratulations to all the graduates. Show some love on the chat, guys. Um, you know, I, I mentioned this earlier, but... Juana, I just want to personally thank you for the expert guidance that you've been providing BizHack. I, I think our um, uh, the check for $25 is in the mail. Uh, <laughs> I really appreciate the consulting that you've done to help us figure out our path in this um, moment. One that's both genuine and helpful. Definitely. Um, all right. So now we're going to get to the graduation celebration and the BizHacker Award. So I'm going to uh, share my screen again. Um, and uh, we're coming down the home stretch, guys. Uh, so the re rest of the um, presentation, but there's one uh, really uh, a couple of amazing elements still to come, including a surprise musical guest. We have uh, the Biz Hacker Award winner and another case study. Um, so, uh, but before we get to all of that, uh, because we know um, you know f folks uh, have time, we're going to do a class photo. Um, and so everybody uh, who's in a position to please turn on your video screens. Um, we have a tradition at BizHack. We do a normal class photo with us smiling. We never use that photo, but we have it for like posterity. And then we're gonna do a group photo. Uh, I mean, a, a silly photo where everybody, you know, one thing I've noticed is it's really cool. You can play with like the dimensions of the camera and you can make one hand really big. So you can have fun with your hands uh, or funny faces. Um, Lilia, let us know when you're ready for our, uh, our serious one, or not our serious, but our straight one. And can you stop sharing so I can see everybody's faces? Uh, since we have 52 people uh, and you don't know in what screen you are, so keep your eyes open, smile, and I will uh, make the pictures, okay? Amazing. And if you could just walk us through as you're taking the photos, just so we know that you're, like, how it's going. The first one. So smile, one, two, three. I'm gonna go to the other screen. Keep smiling, open your eyes. Great. Last screen. You will look beautiful. One, two, three. Okay, now we can do one crazy. All right. Okay. So for screen, one, two, Perfect, second screen, keep holding your pose. One, two, three, third screen. Smile, open your eyes, keep your pose. Ah. And, okay, all right. Let's do one more with the first screen. Uh, I wanna see Juana do that again, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, crazy first screen, everybody, crazy. Mandy, I see you. One, two. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Uh, it's, um, 
you know, it's sometimes awkward, you know, trying to transition to this new normal, but we're doing our best. Um, we love you. We love how enthusiastic you are and generous you are with your, your fun. Thank you for that. Um, we have a couple more items to raffle. Uh, Nube uh, will offer free setup for QuickBooks on Azure, a $2,000 value. Uh, and that goes to? Anthony Henderson. Congratulations, Anthony. I've seen you really active in the chat. That's amazing. We have a free dozen roses bouquets from Claudia's Flowers, and that goes to Dan Gretsch. I mean, and that goes to? Laura Bruni. Ah, Laura Bruni. Uh, congratulations, Laura. Uh, I, I, next to my wife, you're the number two person I would have put in the list of who I wish got that. Congratulations. Uh, with the Miami Arts and Marketing Project, Art Biz Council. I wanted to hand it over now for our graduation celebration to our extraordinary lead instructor, Alex de Carvalho. Uh, Alex needs no introduction, which is why this is blank, uh, but I'll give him one anyway. He is a former head of global social media for IBM. He was a director at Constant Contact where he specialized in training small businesses in how to use email marketing. Speaking of email marketing, when I was still in college, Alex founded his first company, an email marketing company. Uh, that company, which is now uh, more than 20 years old, is still around and working in um, primarily in Europe. Alex is also the, one of the first people worldwide to lead a course in social media marketing. It was when it was brand new. He's always been a pioneer in how to, businesses can use social media. And finally, he, is a, he comes from a diplomat family. His father was an ambassador uh, in Brazil. And Alex, uh, his, his mother is from uh, Finland and he is the honorary consul of Finland in Miami, an extraordinary uh, uh, honor. And uh, it's really nice to have a diplomat teaching our course. Um, I, I wanted to also introduce our three tremendous marketing coaches. You've heard from Ricardo and Erica, also Blanca Mejia, um, who couldn't make it today. But these three marketing coaches, I think it's fair to say, and Alex would agree, are the foundation of the success. Uh, they're the ones who got into the trenches and worked one-on-one -on -one with each of these participants, including the ones who you saw, to help them take their marketing to the next level. Um, one of my favorite stories uh, about Ricardo was it was him who actually noticed that Antoinette had been generating leads in her campaign. Remember, Antoinette, the most profitable campaign in the history of BizHack, didn't actually know she had leads that were being generated by her ad until a coaching session with Ricardo. And then to her credit, she just ran with it and is continuing to run and optimize the ads. So Blanca, Ricardo, Erica, thank you. By the way, for the uh, participants in the course, this is a great opportunity for you to jump on the chat and tell, send your love and tell us about how helpful and appreciative you were uh, of the work and the help that they offered you guys. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand it over to my dear friend, the lead instructor of the COVIDs and cohort 13, Alex Dercaballo. Wow, uh, Dan, thank you for that uh, glowing uh, introduction. Um, you know, I am Brazilian Finn, but if you say I'm Finnish, I'll tell you I'm just getting started. <laughs> okay, I need to work on my jokes. Um, I was laughing, you know, I just hated myself. That was good. <laughs> I like that. Me too, Alex. I mean, the thing, the thing about Zoom is that everyone is, you know, some people are laughing, but it's silent, so I can't tell if you're laughing or not. <laughs> but I wanted to make some uh, acknowledgments here. I mean, you know, we're living through a historical time. It's a transformational time. Uh, we started this class and COVID was going on and everybody was uncertain and we're still uncertain about how this is going to turn out. And then in the middle of class, we had the protests you know, the very unfortunate uh, killing of George Floyd and the protest that resulted, which meant that uh, some people felt it was not appropriate to run ads at that moment. And so it really impacted uh, all of us, you know, emotionally and, and professionally. And so I want to acknowledge that we've gone, we are still living through these historical transformational times. And the fact that you were all there as students working on your projects, um, despite everything that's going on just shows the incredible resilience uh, that you have. You know, resilience means you advance despite adversity and you really uh, exemplified that. And I'm so um, admirative and proud of all of you for, for doing that, for sticking with it. 
I acknowledge that this class is, was accelerated. There's a lot of information very quickly. I was trying to get you to the point where you could run the ads, run another ad, get the leads. Um, and, you know, despite some com complaints, you, you did it. <laughs> so I'm so proud of, of that as well. Um, thank you also for all the feedback that you gave. Um, whether good or bad, it, it just, it helps me and uh, it helps uh, us become uh, better and me become a better uh, person. And also I uh, want to acknowledge the coaches, Ricardo, Blanca, Erica, for all your work. I mean, you're such an important part of the equation uh, for everybody, so um, it couldn't be done without you. And also to Lilia and Dan for helping keep uh, everything together uh, and making it possible and keeping it organized. So. Um, Thank you, and, and mostly I want to thank all the students for all the work you did and also for supporting each other um, through this. So, thank you. So Alex, if you would just read the names as I ru uh, run through the certificates. And <clears throat> I'll mention, each of you are going to be receiving a physical certificate in the mail uh, in the next couple of weeks, but I uh, wanted to uh, share with you, this would be normally when you'd come up and we'd do grip and grin photos, but uh, we can just, uh, you do social distancing high fives uh, and claps with the emoticons as we go through everyone's name. Please blow up the chat, guys. This is for friends and family to acknowledge and, and your peers to acknowledge you. All right, so um, Amber, Anthony, um, I'm, I'm, I'm reading the names, right? Yeah. Antoinette Patterson. Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo. David Goldstein. Hey. David Goldstein. Perfect. Ebony Smith. Yay, Ebony. <laughs> Federico Acevedo, Audubon. <laughs> Grant McGall. I hope Grant. I said that right. <laughs> Jennifer Robertson, amazing. Jerome Hutchinson, Hutch. John Kelly, John Kelly, who went through a, a major rebranding uh, himself uh, with CrossFit. That was incredible. Yeah, John Kelly runs a CrossFit studio and the CEO, uh, because of some really ill-advised remarks, had to step down and he debranded himself like many CrossFits did while in the course. Uh, it was an extraordinary uh, situation John had to go through and he persevered in the course and we congratulate him. Catherine Ling. Kerleen Jules. All right, Kerleen. Uh, Mandy Diaz, Potty. Mario Nowogrodsky. Marte Sibinar. Melissa Hunter Davis. Michelle Benesh. Menu woman. Menu men. Menu women. <laughs> <laughs> Regina Simmons. Rhonda Robinson. Shakira Johnson, which is uh, an incredible story, right, Dan? I mean, yeah, we're um, going to be hearing from her momentarily. Yes, wonderful. Shelly Dolan. Tariro Gatsi, Wendy Poe, Harold Silva, Gustavo Antonetti, Sheila Quinlan, Nishama Lewin, Yvonne Hori, Aaron Clancy. And we also uh, are giving a certification for uh, an instructor. Several of the instructors on this course, Alex, Blanca, and Ricardo already are certified instructors, but we do have one newly certified instructor on the call today. Uh, and that is Erica Mayor. Oh, thank you, Dan. Appreciate that. Uh, absolutely. Uh, thank you for all that you've done and uh, the excellence that you showed. I, I think for like about a year now, I've been trying to uh, get you to, to come and be a part of this team because I just knew what you were going to bring to the table. And uh, Wendy, thank you. Um, uh, Shelly, uh, Melissa, Marta, 
Uh, all the people that you worked with this semester are so grateful for your professionalism, your exactitude, your wisdom, and your full business, your whole business insights. It's been amazing. And I did also want to acknowledge you do a lot in this community. You're the president of the PRSA uh, Miami chapter, and, and you do a lot for us communicators uh, to help uh, us grow. In fact, I saw you did a TikTok marketing um, session, which I'm jealous of. I want to do one for the BizHack series. So I'll be in touch with you about how to put something like that together. Absolutely. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. Welcome to the family. And now uh, it's without further ado, I want to welcome uh, our BizHack Award winner. The BizHacker Award is our highest honor. It is for the single participant in each class who exemplifies what we call the biz hacker mentality. The embracing of the new, the constant experimentation, the willingness to dare to fail gloriously, and a new hashtag that we're adding because of this biz hacker, hashtag never say die. And our biz hacker award winner is, and you guys can take yourself off mute for a sec if you wanna make a little bit of noise, Shakira Johnson. All right, so we're going to give you now the stage for a second. I'm going to do a quick introduction. Alex kind of alluded to your amazing personal story. And then the stage is all yours for our final case study before our musical uh, interlude to wrap up this incredible ceremony. Um, so this is a case study as much about perseverance and a never say die attitude as it is about digital marketing. Shakira Johnson, who lives in the New Jersey area, got sick with COVID-19 and nearly died. She was so sick, she was uh, recovering while she was at her house, that she spent more than six weeks essentially locked in her bedroom of her small apartment while her three children communicated with her through the door. They used to leave food at the foot of her door so that she could eat. And during this unbelievable moment of fear and reflection, Shakira made a decision that she was going to pursue uh, a passion project and a hobby in a more mindful and focused way if she were able to get out of it. And that is what Love by OMG is. Love by OMG is a brand that Shakira started to build primarily through events and now has begun to expand into merchandising. And she took BizHack uh, not only to help her build up her PR and events agency, which is her day job, but also to help her put Love by OMG, uh, a brand that she created from her heart into the world at a time when it couldn't need it more. And it's with that and with total admiration and incredible excitement that I welcome Shakira Johnson to present her case study on Love by OMG. Wow, thank you so much for that introduction. Um, I'm excited to present. Am I sharing my screen? Can you see it? Yes. Okay, awesome. So everyone, welcome to my case study. Um, it's amazing that uh, we're here. I, I'm, I'm still in awe that I won. Um, thank you so much to my classmates for the honor of, of voting me in. Um, I actually, when we started this, I told Dan and I told Ricardo, I said, I'm going to be one of your best students. That's what I told them, like, during the first <laughs> meeting. Um, however, I had no idea how hard the course would be and all of the obstacles that we would face as we were going through it. Um, but here we are and God is good. So here's my case study, Make Money in Your Sleep, presented by Shakira Monet Johnson. And it is around my brand, Love by OMG, which you can find on the web at www.lovebyomg.com. So things we'll cover, we're gonna talk about the story of me, my case study, our marketing funnel, my ahas, and what's next. 
So the story of me is that I'm a busy mom of three. I'm married. Um, like maybe some of you, as this pandemic has played out, I have also <laughs> added to my job description homeschooler. So I have a four-year-old who I am the new teacher for, as well as the other um, two who are 11 and 13, um, who require me to check in and just make sure that they're getting their work done in a timely fashion. In addition to that, I'm an award-winning PR and events pro. My day role is um, the founder of Johnson PR and Events, which does strategic communication and live events. Um, really, when I spoke with Dan and we met through PRSA, we talked about the originally just doing this course to grow my consultancy and grow the thought leadership for um, my business. However, as we talked about it more and as I really just shared with him in transparency, you know, I was still kind of recovering at that time. I said, yeah, I was just sick and you know, I want to also do things that are passionate to me. And we started talking about my nonprofit, which is the OMG Tea Party and the merchandise line that was a part of it. And Dan said, you absolutely, absolutely have to do that one. You know, life is too short. You just had this near-death experience. It's really important that we pursue our passion. And I 100% agree. So then we have our next line, which is cream which is a reference to Wu-Tang for those who know, which means casuals, everything around me. As a part of um, just me growing as a person is growing the multiple revenue streams that we have. My goal is seven. Um, so this would be one of them. Um, and then also this really to be passive income, income that really would be done mostly by the work of bots and algorithms, et cetera. And most importantly to all of it is I'm a light worker. At this point, I'm fully here. I'm doing God's work. My role is to spread as much love and light and truth as possible, um, especially as we are in these transitional times here on the world. Rhonda is saying she loves Wu-Tang. Okay, got it. <laughs> Next slide. Love by OMG, our brand is confidence. It is inspired by the OMG Tea Party. That is an organization that I started about 10 years ago. It's very popular here in the area. We do exclusive events. We partner with everyone from Microsoft to Prudential to Saks Fifth Avenue, um, Kelly Rowland and the list goes on um, to bring exclusive events to women and girls. Um, it empowers women and girls through all types of activities from etiquette to vision boards to, um, to working with stylists for how you can improve your look at work and beyond. And it really is purpose driven. The problem is that we had a website that really only had traffic if I posted on social media. Um, and the fun fact is I really prefer to stay off of social media. It's very noisy for me. There's a lot going on. If I go on social media, who knows by the time I start clicking and pushing when scrolling where I might be or how much time goes by. So I know for me, it's just best in general to keep my social media use at a minimum. So how do I really continue to drive traffic to my site without me having to be the influencer for it. And that was to create and drive traffic with these ads. Um, my results as going through this class is that I had an updated website. So my website needed some work just to be updated. The last time it was really updated was holiday 2019. Um, so Ricardo and Erica kind of just worked with me to um, do some fine editing that I needed to do on the website as, as well as just change some of the merchandise around. Um, also my ad, the ad increased traffic to my site over 100%. There were times when people would never come onto the site, et cetera. Um, however, consistently since I ran the ad, even though the ad was only for a short period of time, the site traffic has continued to increase. Also one purchase was made processed and manufactured and shipped entirely by bots. Again, this is a passive income stream. So the goal is to have the um, purchasing and everything that happens with the site really be maintained by 
artificial intelligence. So once that purchase was made, I didn't have to lift a finger. I just saw it come in and I saw the money come into my account. Funnel life hashtag Alex taught me. So something for sure that I learned in this class is just our marketing funnel and um, the different components that are important to that marketing funnel. For this, I took a few liberties for our case study. So I ran an ad, it had 14,470 impressions. The reach was 10,266 people. 232 people watched the video 100%. Um, the traffic to the website, the last time I updated this was 106 visits to the website, and I had one sale. In terms of investment, um, this is Funnel Life hashtag Dan taught me because some of you may remember the very first time that I did the presentation, this slide wasn't in there. And Dan, you know, we had a, a talk before this and he said, you know, I just want you to make sure that we put the spend and those rates of return and things of that nature in there. So Dan, thank you for that. So I spent $30 on my ad. The conversion rate was 1.89 and these percentages I actually got from Shopify. So for those of you who have Shopify sites, you know they run all those analytics and you can pick them up there. So these analytics that I've been showcasing in this case study are a combination of Facebook analytics and Shopify analytics. The total sale came to $23.81, which could be seen as a loss of $6.19. However, because this was the very first ad that I ever ran, I consider it a complete win because one, I now have the confidence to know that with the proper ad and the proper conversion, I can literally make money in my sleep by putting these ads up and these ads running and then the site through drop shipping and print on demand can process these things on their own with little to no involvement from me. So what were some of my aha moments here in the class? One is just learning about the demographics. Um, really, I, I was able to break this down and create um, buyer personas for the different people who um, are already friends of OMG and who look to be in the future. The fundamentals of an ad, which are very important. I, you know, Ricardo, he asked me, he said, what do you want to do? I said, sell. He said, no, Shakira, you have to back it up. You have to do awareness. And, you know, so him just teaching me the fundamentals of how to actually run the ads. Um, buyer's journey, understanding that. And then like Carlene and so many others said, which is, this is hard, you know, it's just really hard. People make it look easy, but this is hard work and it's something that you have to really stay on. The next thing that I learned, which was the big thing is never say die. Like Alex alluded to, this was really a tough semester. Um, I'm used to going to school. I'm used to doing well in school. I, you know, went to undergrad. I have my master's, all those things, but this was tough. It wasn't just tough due to the actual schoolwork, but it was tough because again, with the pandemic, COVID, and then also on top of that, the racial and civil unrest that came across um, during the time that we were in the class, not only did we have work to do, but we had to just mentally stay balanced, which was quite difficult at times. There was actually a time right before class started that I, I was kind of like swept into a protest. Um, which, you know, jolted me so much. So really, it was just the gut, the grit of just stick with it. Don't give up. There were a couple of times that um, Alex and Ricardo can tell you, I was like, I don't want to run this ad. It's not good enough. And they were like, just go with it. They just pushed. And that never say die spirit really paid off. And it's not just a lesson for this course, but it's just a lesson in life, literally and figuratively with me being sick, just saying, no, I'm gonna live. And then with this course and with the things that I do say, no, I'm gonna win, I'm gonna, per I'm gonna pursue it. Even if winning sometimes looks ugly, you know, I'm going to just get this done. What's next for me? One, breathe a sigh of relief. Not only does school end for me this week, but also, um, <laughs> also the class ended. So I have a bit more time. I did hire a new social media manager. We're going to have new merch that launches, as you can see here, with the spread love. 
And then also we're gonna run more ads and prepare ourselves for holiday 2020. Again, just thank you so much to Dan, Alex, Ricardo, Erica, Lilia, the coaches and all my amazing classmates. I invite everyone to please connect with me on LinkedIn. You can click quickly go to it if you go to shakiramjohnson.com or you can just find me by typing my name in. And I also invite everyone to please follow the OMG Tea Party on Facebook and Instagram. Again, thank you so much for the opportunity and thank you to my amazing classmates for this honor. I, um, I'm still processing it and I am just so happy that I took the risk and I bet on myself and invested in personal development and did the Big Biz Hack Club course. It has changed my life and also I know that through this course, I have a path to financial wellness that is passive and can run through the presence of artificial intelligence and bots. So thank you so much and everyone have a blessed day. Amazing, so, so touching uh, Shakira and beautifully said and so heartfelt, uh, thank you. Thank you for being here. And wow, Shakira, well, congrats. I mean, we talked uh, yesterday, just, just, just kind of touching in. Um, I already told you that, you know, you're doing, you're doing an amazing job. I really was inspired, particularly by you and everything that you, 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 you essentially went through. Um, but you fought through and through um, to the end. And, and that's what I loved about it. Um, I think you're, you're poised for that. Uh, um, you know, endless stream of, uh, of income. A lot of things happen in your sleep and even Facebook ad is running your sleep too. So just keep it going and, uh, and best of luck. Thank you. I mean, even Ricardo knows that while this was going on, we onboarded a big client. It was, yeah. it was just so, so many things happening and, and we had our coaching call and I was just like, Ricardo, I'm doing this and that, and I have to have this ready. And we kind of just talked through it and we got it done. So also something that I shared with Dan was just the remarkable support of the coaches and the patience that they had. Um, I know at least with me, you know, I was definitely in no way the, a flawless student, um, but they, they, under, they understood that people- Congratulations, the Shakira from Nana, your grandmother. Uh, who is, is that? That's my grandmother. That's so cute. That's grandmother, <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and your mama too. Yeah, oh, thank you, mama. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you, mama. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my real life. <laughs> thank you, mom, and thank you, grandma. <laughs> my husband Quite well. too. My husband is on too. I just I wanted to make sure to see you. Uh, and, and I didn't have them in the original notes, but thank you to my amazing family, my amazing children, and my husband, because when I'm working with these things, that means that I'm not working with them. So I appreciate it. Thank you, Barry, Jay, and Shakira, and Summer. Mom, Shakira, can hear you. Keith got to see you too. Okay. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> go go on mute now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was one of the greatest moments in BizHack history. Thank you, Nana. Um, and uh, you know, Shakira, I, 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 we're gonna move on. But if uh, if your girls are anywhere near and you want them to just come into the frame so everybody can see them. Uh, I'm going to move on, but Shakira's two beautiful girls are almost a constant presence as well as a son uh, and who are her support and uh, uh, like, uh, hi, hi girls, thank you for uh, being a part of all of this. Um, I have a funny story. I, I do sometimes when I get excited tend to curse and Shakira would often leave her, uh, her Zoom screen turned off because her girls were in her lap. They haven't left her side basically since the COVID thing. And uh, she then texts me uh, using the chat. She's like, Dan, watch your language. There are kids in the room. Uh, so I'm still getting used to the, uh, the, 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 the nuances of online education. So I did want to just mention the applications are open to our next cohort, which starts in two weeks from a week from Monday, coming up fast. Uh, Alex is going to be 
the lead instructor again, and a lot of the same coaches are coming back as well as a couple really exciting new coaches. So if you want an experience like what you've saw, seen today, uh, if you know someone who could really benefit from having their business catapulted, uh, if you want a course that actually pays for itself uh, often very quickly, uh, I really invite you to come. We're very proud of the business that we've built, the education we're offering, and the community that we're fostering here at BizHack. I also wanted to reiterate that we are offering scholarships to any minority-owned or women-owned businesses, um, and so as well as entrepreneurs of color. So if you're not sure if it's a fit, apply. There's no obligation, but scholarship funds uh, uh, are gonna run out. Uh, we have had a lot of interest, and so I do invite you to apply and tell your friends to apply. It's try.bizhack.com slash scholarship. And here's a little bit more information about the course. Uh, if you're interested, you can just go to bizhack.com and all of that is there. We're having an info session about the scholarship on Friday at noon. In order to be invited to the info session, you need to actually apply for the um, scholarship. So I definitely welcome, recommend that you do that. And now we're gonna wrap up with uh, our biggest thank you gifts in the raffle, as well as a musical interlude. And so Lilia, get ready. We're gonna get started with the musical interlude shortly. Um, so we have a free home valuation and $25 Amazon gift card from Regina Simmons Realty. And the winner is? Janina Piazzetta. Ah, Janina, it's great to hear that you're here. You've been one of the most consistent people on our webinars and thank you for sticking through the whole thing. This is crazy awesome. We have one case of Meritage Club wine um, from Wendy Poe and Company and the winner is Lilia. Rita Miral. Congratulations, Rita. That's awesome. Another great entrepreneur supporter in the community. And then finally, John Kelly uh, uh, has a $100 gift card to use in the personal training sessions. And the winner is? Farouk Mohamed. Congratulations, Farouk. It's, uh, that's a great one. So I wanted to uh, tell you guys, if you didn't know, that our very own Ricardo Barris is a musician uh, named Ricky Anthony. And he wrote a song called Hats Off To You, which is an original composition, an original composition dedicated to the COVIDs because of your inspiring, inspiring example. Um, Ricardo, I'm gonna give you a, a, a chance to just introduce us to the song, and then we're gonna play it as we close out this amazing 13th graduation celebration. Well, thanks, thanks, Dan. A lot of people didn't didn't doesn't know the other psychic of, of me, which I, I do write, I, I do um, sing, and I've, I've been a vocal coach for some time. This essentially is sort of another side of me. Uh, always cool to have multiple sides, um, but in business you usually don't find that. But um, the the song really came on the backdrops of just what I've heard and seen over the last couple of weeks, and particularly one of the story that really touched me is Shakira's, and 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 it's just the way that she just pulled through, it, it has been a huge inspiration to me sort of penning this, these lyrics. And I hope that it, 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 you know, it, it reaches you the same way it touches me. Um, and for everyone else um, uh, who, is, who is looking on, and I think this, uh, this, this song has life um, and it will need to inspire folks um, across the years and, and, and the ages to come. So um, have fun listening. I, I actually will share in the in the in the um, in the chat a a link to the act to the audio. This is actually a draft. It was still we're still sort of completing it out at studio, and it would be published in iTunes um, under Ricky Anthony, um, which which I have several other titles there right now as well. So you can listen to that in your own time, and um, feel free to give me your feedback. Let me know uh, what your thoughts are. All right. Without further ado. He won now Cross the finish line And knowing that you did it somehow while on the journey, there were many things you didn't know. 
how it's because of your openness you learn look what you've earned yeah. and as you go wrong planting those seeds of all the lessons learned to reap what you sow now being afraid to tell and share to everyone you know with complete Openness to learn, they too can learn. I lift my hands off to you, and you, and you, for doing all the things you need to do. Instead of giving up, oh, you're through and through. You should be too. Hats off to you. that i want to close out you can leave the music going and I, uh, thank you ricardo amazing there's really nothing else to say grasp the opportunity guys the world is your oyster just educate yourself and go get them congratulations cohort 13 the covids and uh, this is just the beautiful beginning of the next chapter for all of you thank you everybody